Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel then please subscribe and click on the notification bell to be the first to hear about my latest videos. In this video I'm going to talk about voltage drop and provide some example calculations. This video is part of a series of electrical calculation guides and is intended as a guide for anyone who works in the electrical industry in the UK. In the videos on my channel I provide tips based on my experience of working in the electrical industry for more than 20 years both on the client side and for many years as an electrical QS for approved contractors. So the requirements for voltage drop are found in Appendix 4 of B7671, which requires that the voltage drop between the origin of the installation and the load should not be greater than the values in Table 4AB of B7671, which are 3% for lighting and 5% for other uses. And this is for low voltage installations supplied from the public supply. This is to ensure that the voltage is not so low that it would impair the proper functioning of the equipment. One thing to bear in mind is that if the equipment being supplied is subject to a product standard, the voltage at the load must not be lower than that specified in the product standard. So it's important that we always check the product standard and manufacturer's instructions for any specific equipment. Equipment with high inrush currents, such as motors, may have higher volt drop due to the starter providing that it's within the limits that specified by the product standard or the manufacturer's instructions. I should also mention that Table 4AB specifies higher values for volt drop where low voltage installations are supplied from a private supply, for example, where a large installation is supplied from a client's own transformer. However, the final circuit volt drop should still be within 3% and 5% respectively. So for the purposes of this example, I'm going to assume that the electricity is supplied from a low voltage public supply. As well as affecting the operation of electrical equipment, voltage drop also causes energy losses. So it's also worth considering limiting the voltage drop to a level below that required by section 525 and table 4AB to reduce energy losses. This is mentioned in appendix 17 of BS7671, which relates to energy efficiency. So here we have the standard volt drop equation. We take the value for millivolts per ampere per meter, multiply by the design current and the circuit length, and then divide by 1000. So here we have an example calculation for a single phase circuit with a design current of 35 amps wired in 10 millimeter 70 degree PVC PVC cable with a circuit length of 27 meters. So the value for millivolts per ampere per meter is taken in this instance from table 4D5, and that, and that is 4.4. The design current is 35. The length of the circuit is 27. So the equation becomes voltage drop equals 4.4 multiplied by 35, multiplied by 27, and then divided by 1000. And that gives us an answer of 4.158 volts. So as the maximum permitted volt drop is 5% for this circuit, a volt drop of 4.158 volts is acceptable. The volt drop can be further reduced by selecting a cable with a larger CSA to help reduce energy losses. So here we have another example, this time for a lighting circuit. So for a single phase lighting circuit with a design current of 0.508 amps, wired in 1.5 mm 70 degree PVC PVC cable with a circuit length of 90 meters. So the value for millivolts per ampere per meter is taken again from table 45 and that comes to 29. The design current is 0.508 and the length of the circuit is 90. So the equation becomes voltage drop equals 29 multiplied by 0.508 multiplied by 90 and then divided by 1000. And this comes to 1.325 volts. So as the maximum permitted volt drop is 3% of this circuit, a volt drop of 1.325 volts is acceptable. There is another video on my channel about how to calculate the maximum circuit length for volt drop and I will add a link at the end of this video. So as the maximum permissible volt drop is expressed as a percentage, it is useful to convert the actual volt drop to a percentage when justifying the answer. For the example in the previous slide, the maximum volt drop for a lighting circuit is 3%. So if the actual volt drop is 1.325 volts, we can convert this to a percentage by dividing by the voltage and then multiplying by 100. So if we take 
325 and divide by 230 and then multiply by 100 that gives us a percentage of 0.57 so as the maximum voltage drop for a lighting circuit is 3 percent 0.57 percent is acceptable so where the power factor is known for a circuit we can take this into account in the voltage drop calculation so the equation becomes voltage drop equals millivolts per ampere per meter multiplied by design current multiplied by length multiplied by power factor and then divided by 1000 in the example on the previous slides table 45 only gives one value for millivolts per ampere per meter this is because the cables only go up to 16 mil for other cables you will notice that where cables are larger than 16 mil there are three values for millivolts per ampere per meter and these are listed under the headings r x and z r is for resistive and x is for reactive so where the power factor is not known and we're using a cable that's larger than 16 mil we use the value for millivolts per ampere per meter z so the equation becomes voltage drop equals millivolts per ampere per meter z multiplied by design current multiplied by length and then divided by 1000 where cables are larger than 16 mil and the power factor is known there is a more accurate method of calculating voltage drop using the resistive and reactive values of millivolts per ampere per meter this is mentioned in 6.2 of appendix 4 in BS 7671 and I might include this in a future video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click on the notification bell to hear about future videos.